let's talk about Cody for a second. Cody is currently the best player in Melee. He's rank one, even though I kind of got my hands on at Collision. He went to Battle of BC and proceeded to destroy everyone. From losers, might I add. He lost to Sunse, uh, game five, in winners, and came back and proceeded to beat, what was it, Axe into, or that Skurzo into Axe, something like that, into Leffen, into Joshman, into, into, yeah, into Mango, into Jmook, into Zane, into Amsa, into Amsa, just everyone, except me. But he beat everyone else, right? And he did it only dropping two games. Now, when you have someone who wins that prominently, that loudly, you're gonna you're gonna ruffle some feathers. It's just the nature of things. People people hate failing. People hate when their guy fails, and when there's a new guy who's doing a lot better. Now, the reason the reason um, I wanted to talk about this is because uh, when someone starts winning a lot, they become the person who is most analyzed, right? The person who's most uh, you know, scrutinize on the chopping block for every angle, for every single semblance of their being, for every category that they fall into. Every detail about this person um, suddenly gets put into the limelight because uh, Smash is what we call a meritocracy, right guys? A meritocracy. In other words, the people who uh, achieve the most are usually known the most, right? It's kind of like how it goes, like the top players there's a reason they had a lot of his voices. And the TOs also. The top players have a huge voice. So, when it comes to the topic of Cody, why is this uh, a big pressing issue? Well, one thing I'll say is that after specifically this weekend that he won, this, this was happening too, also, um, like, before he won, but I saw a lot more this weekend too. I saw a post from Slime. Uh, and I think uh, it wouldn't be one of, you know, first time Slime has said, something, you know, kind of bluntly and loudly like this. Uh, but he said, people aren't dumb for thinking Cody is a boring guy, but it's also okay to be boring. There's also a reason the doc captivated us and that viewership goes down by thousands when Mango is out. We're drawn to characters and stories, better or worse, and we shouldn't fight. Um, and the reason he's saying this is because there's been a lot of, um, there's been a lot of discourse about how people consider Cody to be not an entertaining rank one or a boring player in a lot of ways or having a personality that isn't as interesting as, say, me or mangoes or whatever it is um and it's odd too because cody does not play in the in what i would consider a lame way whatsoever the what the, what i see when i when i when i watch cody play is not lame it's just you know what i mean it's like we're taking all these years of fox play right and yes fox is the best character in the game but he's also the most studied and research character, the character that people have developed the most count to play for across the years. No amount of me or any other player bitching about Fox is going to change the fact that Fox has insanely precise, calculated, and possible counterplay. Although he's still very, very good. Cody is first person to be rank one with solo Fox ever? Think about that for a second. It's kind of a bizarre statistic. It's kind of a bizarre statistic. I don't think there's a single other fighting game where the best character solo was ever not rank one until now. I'm trying to think of a, of a counter example, but I could be wrong. You know, it's, it's uh, I don't know. It's just crazy. Uh, of course, DLC and stuff changes things around a good bit too. I get that actually. In the case of Bayonetta, I consider DLC to be late in the game. Um, so on and so forth, which, uh, that, that could change it too. But when, when DLC is involved, I don't consider it like as... I'm talking about a game where... It, 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 again, it's a hard example because almost every fighting game now has DLC. Games that didn't have DLC and what you see is what you got. 64 Pikachu, Melee Fox, Brawl Meta Knight, so on and so forth. Usually, the best character in a game is uh, considered... Or has rank one in that case. Cody is the first player in a game like Melee, and mind you, Melee is 23 years old. First person to actually be rank one with Fox. So to do that, it's not about like, oh, you're taking advantage of a broken character, this and that, no, it, it takes skill. It just takes straight up skill to do it. The issue is, if you go on Reddit right now, or if you go on Reddit any day in the past like 30 days, I'm sorry, let's say so since January. Since Cody became rank one, 
and won the show match versus Zayn. I feel like every time I'm going on Reddit or on Twitter, there's at least a few people just discussing um, either why do people hate Cody or man, I hate Cody or Cody is the least interesting ranking we've had or Cody is way too dumb. Like I'm seeing it's like people are going out of their way to find things to be upset about. And it's kind of just weird. And the, the reason I'm so like passionate about this topic is because I, before Cody or Zayn uh, as rank one in Melee, was the guy that people loved to talk about. In fact, people still talk about me quite a lot to this day. It does come with the territory. You know what I mean? It, it comes with the territory. And I said, reading all the threads and discourse about Cody and his play style and controller and personality and blood type and what he's for breakfast gave me the craziest whiplash and it reminded me what it was like being rank one in melee. I do not miss that shit, Godspeed, soldier. And I, I said that to Cody and I, and I really meant it. I really actually meant it. You ask me right now, do I want to be rank one again in this game? Do I want to be rank one? Um, and the answer is I would love to be the best player again just for the pride of it but I really don't want everything else that comes with it you know I was I was getting cheered for loudest than I ever have in like in so long maybe it's in smash con right super loud cheers for camping Cody on ledge at collision like it's just and I thought to myself why why are you suddenly cheering for me when I'm doing the exact same thing I was doing, like, back when I was getting jeered. And, like, what I'll say is this, like, when you... It's almost as if people aren't really angry about what you do. It's the context in which you do it, right? If I ledge camp Mango, I'm gonna get jeered. If I do it versus Cody Schwab, I get cheered for. Why? It turns out people actually don't mind camping. They just want to see blood. They want to see the guy on top fall. It just goes back to the the Roman times or the Colosseum. People love to see the smaller guy go on top, right? Because maybe the smaller guy getting on top reminds them of themselves. People who are grinding. People who one day would love and dream about being on that stage. It gives some level of relativity. Um, and I think that when it when it when it comes into it, it's like you want like your boy to succeed, right? You want someone just like you to succeed and prove it's possible. But then what happens when that boy, when that, you know, friend or that homie gets really good and then keeps on getting good and then gets to the very, very top, gets to the very, very top. Suddenly, you no longer relate to that person because suddenly they're not, they're no longer one of you. They're carving their own path. They're making their own destiny occur in this eSport. And suddenly they're in the Pantheon. And I think when I was rank one in Melee, not even there, I think I was rank two when I met Cody. I think I met, I met Cody in 2016, 2015, I'm sorry, I remember. Around those years, near the Evo win is when I met Cody. I met him and Toussaint. And what I liked about Cody and Toussaint was that they gave me the time of the day. Back then it was very popular to hate me and a lot of people were just like, push me out of their circles. It was kind of just me and Crunch winning and everyone telling us to go fuck ourselves pretty much. Toussaint and Cody, they treated me like a human being, which I really, to this day, respect about them. And I even told them that in the boat. We talked about this at the, ba the Battle of BC boat party afterwards. It's on the onus, I think, of the community to have so much disdain for someone at rank one who, in retrospect is kind of one of the least controversial rank ones we've had what what, the, what what do people complain about cody right they complain about his personality he's, he's too he's too blunt maybe he's too honest he talks too much or or he uh, he uses z jump right or he, he uses vivance these are all things that when you think about it if zane was using vivance i don't think anyone would give a shit if zane was using z jump i don't think anyone would give a shit and if zane was a blunt guy I think people would choose to ignore it. Because you know who's also really, really blunt? Mango. Mango is blunt as hell and very, very honest. But the thing is, Mango is a very funny person. He's good at using comedy, and he's very witty, and people enjoy that about him. I enjoy that about Mango. Obviously, everyone does. And in other words, he's able to get away with a lot of stuff because of the reputation he's built, right? And you'll notice, I don't know if you want to 
consider it a, a political issue, an issue of politics. But if you have one player tweeting or saying the exact same thing as, say, Mango, it's a huge fucking issue. The brand and what you make for yourself dictates sort of what you're allowed to and what you're not allowed to say. So, the example here also, think about Zane. Zane was rank one right before Cody for a couple of years, more than that if you include the online era. Um, and Zane very, very rarely got at all the same complaints that Cody gets. I think the issue was that Zane wasn't rank one for long enough. I think any player, this is a, you can quote me, even Mango, any player, if they're rank one for more than a year, if they the moment they hit two years, because right now, think about it, Cody has been technically rank one for a whole year, because so he was rank one 2023, 20, and now he's been rank, rank one for these four months. Any player who is rank one for longer than a year starts to have people get really upset about it for almost any reason they can conjure. I'm not saying they're made up reasons, I'm not saying the reasons are invalid, but they'll go out of their way. They'll put literally more energy into finding those reasons simply because they want to see the guy on top fall because it's entertaining. There is absolutely no more refutable proof of that than me getting cheered for to ledge camp Cody. It's just absolutely bonkers to even consider. Because right now, I am an underdog. I'm not top five, I'm ranked seven right now. I had a really good collision, but I had a very average uh, battle of BC. In fact, me and Mango both got fifth, right? So th the point of the matter is this. I, you have to remember people aren't made of paper. They're not, they're not made of stone. They're made of organs and skin and human stuff. They are human. And when you keep reading people's opinions about you every single day for a year of being ranked one, then two years, like I did, it starts to get to you. It starts to really fuck with you at a mental level. I think we as a community could benefit more from finding the good in the meta being at the point where you have someone like Cody that talented, that able to break apart the game in ways that you could dream of doing, you couldn't even dream of doing. And I think we should appreciate the level of skill, the level of, of, of expertise we're seeing at this game instead of finding different knives to throw at this guy at, at the virtual level, you know? I think we could benefit, obviously like, people like beef, people like animosity, we like a good storyline. Fuck, I love a good storyline. Who, Me of all people, of course I do, especially in Ultimate. There's also parts to it that I think we can do away with. I think we can do away with attacking Cody on a personal basis for what it is, you know what I mean? Um, it just seems like it's something that's counterproductive and counterintuitive to what we've kind of been aiming towards. And especially with the way that I was treated before and the way I'm treated now. And really the only thing that changed was I started losing and I started doing content for a different game. That's basically the two big changes. Yeah, I'm 30 years old now and I've learned a lot and I've grown a lot too over the years. But like, it's hard to not have the comparison there when Cody is rank one and he's getting analyzed on an, on an atomic level of every fiber of his beat. People are gonna be different. People are gonna be unlike you. It's fine. I don't think we should try and alienate someone or toss like the words that we are at someone. In retrospect, really hasn't done anything that damning at all. Yeah, I think we, we could just benefit more from uh, more appreciation into what different personalities bring rather than complaining about what someone does or doesn't have. And I wish that was the case. So, um, yeah, he's the one of the hardest workers of a video game I've seen in my entire life. And life has dealt him one of the shittiest hands anyone could ever have. If you don't think so, I truly hope someone makes a video about what this guy went through to get to where he is. And it's, uh, it's not boring. It's not stale or lame. It's fucking inspirational. And I wish more people saw that. So a huge shout out to Cody. And I hope that more people as his rank one reign probably will last I think two years minimum playing at this level um, I hope more people start start to appreciate the talent this kid has instead of uh, I don't know ripping it apart at every angle that we can because we're bored but yeah community discussion is good you know obviously there's, there's, there's gonna be controller discourse there's gonna be you know discourse about personalities it's always gonna be there too I've always said less hate and more cheering for the guy you want to win. I'd rather see 20 people glazing Mango on Twitter than one guy 
tearing Cody down at a personal level and making him not want to be part of this scene. You know what I mean? I'd rather have that. Because at least then it's positive. That's, that's what I think. Anyways, that was my talk. And uh, honestly, Cody is one of the reasons I'm inspired to grind the way I am now. So if you're a fan of me, that makes you a fan of Cody. Because I wouldn't be here grinding and fucking working as hard as I am now in Melee uh, if it wasn't for what he's able to accomplish in such, a short, in such a short time, really, when you think about it. Thank you for watching, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think about Cody. Or if you don't know what you think about Cody, everyone in the comments, say something nice about a player that you like. All right? Say something nice.